Lagoon 1 is one of only a handful of rooms that can single-handedly wreck your entire run. The pressure of killing five blue dark nuts as quickly as you can, compounded with the issue of dealing with four turrets constantly firing at you while doing so, is enough to cause slight panic when even stepping into this room. The goal of this room tutorial will be to give the runner an opening movement pattern when initially attacking the room, and then due to the randomness of the movement of the remaining dark nuts, will provide techniques in order to clean up the room as quickly as possible. This room will be teaching for consistency rather than pure speed. Let's dive in. To begin, let's analyze the room and understand exactly what we're dealing with. We've seen blue dark nuts before and know that corralling them into the middle of the room is the best strategy for controlling the randomness of their movement. However, the last time we were attempting to eliminate a roomful like this, we didn't have the turrets firing at us and punishing slow play. This brings us to the reason the room has been nicknamed Blue Lagoon. Due to the amount of objects on the screen at any given time in this room, whether it's Link, the Dark Nuts, Fireballs, or even a Sword Beam, at times the CPU can't handle everything and slows the game down, adding lag frames to handle the processing. This slowdown is felt initially when we walk into the room and doesn't stop until we clear out a couple of these objects. So what's directly in our control that we can eliminate from all these variables? The Dark Nuts. We need to quickly kill one of these Dark Nuts and eliminate the lag frames from occurring, which will help decrease your overall room time. While moving directly into the center of the room would be faster and accomplish our goal of bringing Link to the middle to assist with grouping the Dark Nuts, that's problematic as the RNG of the initial Dark Nut movement can create some awkward positioning in trying to place the first kill. And while trying to place that first kill, you're encountering the room lag we just spoke about. In addition, Link starts the screen on a half tile, and the general rule of thumb when fighting Dark Nuts is you want to fight them on full tiles as to minimize the chance a Dark Nut will be able to turn into you. So for consistency's sake, walking directly north when entering this room is out. Instead, we want to attack this room like a lion would stalk its prey, and isolate the weak Dark Nut from the herd. This Dark Nut in the southeast is the perfect target for the first kill in the room, as it's isolated from the pack in the northeast and close to the door. What we accomplish by attacking this Dark Nut is to help eliminate lag and give Link a little more breathing room while trying to move towards our ultimate goal of finishing the room in the middle. The movement you'll want to do when walking into the room to accomplish this is walking a tile and a half to this full tile, then turning north. What that will allow you to do is position Link to be at a direct diagonal from this southeast Dark Nut and puts you in prime position for your first swing. When fighting Dark Nuts, you want to place Link directly adjacent to the tile that Dark Nut is walking into. Because diagonals will cover two of those four tiles directly adjacent to the Dark Nut, that's where you want to position yourself. As the Dark Nut moves into the tile adjacent to Link, you want to begin your swing as you're safe from any retaliation since Dark Nuts can't move on the half tiles. They have to wait until they're at the full tile to turn. So this initial movement sets the runner up to begin eliminating the southeast dark net from the diagonal in which the dark net started and begins the room with solid combat principles. After connecting on the first hit, you'll want to leave the square you're on in preparation to react to the dark net's next move, which might include moving into the square that you occupy. A solid 1-2 punch can then be placed in the dark net if he enters the square you just vacated and you're ready to move on. After reacting to the first Dark Nut in the southeast, and hopefully completing this kill, you'll want to make your way to this orange zone in the middle of the room. You'll recognize this is the area where Link and Anti-Link come together, so the remaining Dark Nut turning decisions will often be made in favor of the runner. Any Dark Nuts you encounter along the way, you'll want to attack with the same Dark Nut combat principles, setting up your diagonals, and working on a 1-2 punch. Let's take a look at a few of the examples in clearing this room, starting with the opening movement that we suggest. On this first example, what you're going to see is Link use the preferred path of moving one and a half tiles to the right, moving up one tile, and then we're going to attack this southeast dark net, which is going to be the theme of this entire tutorial. Once that first strike is made, you're going to see Link make a decision either to move to the right square in anticipation of the dark net coming south, or as you're going to see here, um, the dark net's actually going to move north. So Link is going to start the movement to the right, read that dark net, and then follow him behind and in preparation for the second strike, which is going to get this kill on the dark net. After that, you're going to see Link make a conscious effort to try to get to the middle here. Uh, but what's going to happen is these dark nets here on the right um, are actually going to stay home. They're actually going to stay in this area. So Link is not going to chase anywhere. He's going to go where the combat takes him. Let's take a look and see exactly how Link attacks this room. So you can see that very first move there, he actually followed the dark net. 
um, right up, and he's up and doing combat in the top right hand corner. And you can see here as he's doing this, as, we, as after we leave this square, what Link is attempting to do is he's trying to get into these diagonals to be able to take out the Dark Knight. So you can see this Dark Knight here, as it was moving to the left, Link grabbed this square and did the combat there. And then he's trying to get to the square in front of where the Dark Knights are going. So these Dark Knights are going right, he's doing combat just to the right of that. This Dark Knight here um, moved to the left, and so he chased on that same tile. What you want to be careful of is doing combat on the same row. Um, sometimes those Dark Knights can turn around. It worked out for Link there. But you can see overall he's just using his diagonals, maintaining his diagonals, not chasing anything, coming to wherever the combat takes him. So um, this was a, a pretty quick clear of this room, about 12 seconds long, um, and Link is going to be able to get out of here. Okay, for the second example, what you're going to see Link do is the exact same preferred movement. One and a half tiles to the right, he's going to come up. Uh, again, this Dark Knight is going to go north, so Link is going to go um, behind and try to take that first kill out. But these Dark Knights this time, they're not going to congregate in the northeast. They're actually going to be more in the right central. Um, but what I want you to look at this time as you're um, viewing this second example is the diagonals that Link chooses to 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 take on. So again, as a Dark Knight is coming, if the Dark Knight is standing here on this square and going to the right, what Link wants to be is either up here or down here, diagonally from this Dark Knight, getting ready to swing into the square as, as the Dark Knight's walking this way. So take a look at the diagonals, watch those, because this is a, per a picture perfect example of working those um, almost to perfection. And then at the end, take a look at Link, because what he's going to do is he's actually going to stay in the middle here. We're trying to finish off in this orange highlighted square, these tiles here, because that's where Link and Anti-Link are going to come together. So um, as you watch the end of this example, watch Link work himself back to the middle. And even though the Dark Knight is trying to, um, trying to leave, Link is going to hold position. He's going to swing to the right and let the sword beam do the work. So um, finishing here in the middle high is going to be a key to a, a good time in this room. So we're going to watch that again, but watch the, the third and fourth Dark Knight kills specifically. So you see a diagonal right here. Um, you see this Dark Knight start comes, starting to come south. So as Link was finishing off that first one, um, he was able to take out the second one um, by sidestepping and then getting ready to swing into that tile. Um, so there's the first one right there. He's got to move out of the way of this one. He's prepping these diagonals, the third one diagonal, fourth one diagonal. Um, just a very good job of using those to your advantage, not chasing the Dark Knight, finishing in the middle. Let's watch it one more time. So those diagonals are being worked to perfection, dodging the fireballs, leaving here with full health. That is a, a fantastic room. We're going to watch it one more time in full. The final example we're going to show is one that's going to stress the importance of finishing in this orange square. You're going to see a lot of combat here in the southeast, and you're going to see a lot of um, damage being done, but only one hit on a Dark Knight, not really finishing them off, but the Dark Knights are actually going to start to scatter. What Link does is he doesn't panic. He, he ends up here in the middle, and he's able to finish off Dark Knights as they come to him. So you're going to see the, the importance of not chasing the different quadrants here, um, and actually starting your combat here, but working your way towards the middle, and able to finish off a good room. Um, it looked like it could have been a little bit of an issue, but bringing them back home to the center was the key here, um, and, and it's going to be a, a beautiful display here. So we got the first initial to the right and up movement, working towards the middle now, doing the combat. But again, you see three separate quadrants that these Dark Knights scattered to. Link came to the middle and the Dark Knights come back to them. So again, the first hit here, this one goes south. So Link turns his attention to something else. He's trying to do as much damage per second as he can. And he's working towards the Dark Knights um, and letting the Dark Knights work towards him. Um, you see two Dark Knights right there, but then they all scatter. Um, so what Link does, he comes to the middle, he brings them back to him. Uh, this Dark Knight was way over here. While he was doing combat, he let that Dark Knight come back. So working his diagonals, um, doing some combat here, and then just eventually working back towards the middle, and these Dark Knights are going to work back here. If you he would have chased every single one of these, instead of a 13-second room here, you'd have probably had a 15-, 16-second room. So um, just, a, just a very heads up. And this is how you want to finish your room, right here in the middle. 
Um, now, if you do have combat going on, if they all come down to the same quadrant, you definitely want to go ahead and take them out where they are. Uh, but if they start to scatter like this, and you want to work towards the middle and let them come back. So we're going to watch this finish up, and then we're going to watch one more time. And that there is how you finish off a room that started um, not the best. It wasn't ideal. And that's the tough part about doing a tutorial for this room is that these rooms never go ideally. It's never going to be perfect. I can't give you a, um, a picture-perfect example of this is exactly where you walk. This is the combat that you're going to do. And that's why this tutorial is going to actually be a little shorter than most because there's not one scripted path that you can do in the room. You've got the initial movement. We know which darknet we're going to take out. We're going to go to the right and up. We're going to focus on this first darknet. Um, Link here is, is going exactly where we want to this darknet's coming south so he's going to swing to the right but then you saw that darknet kept going south it didn't come into link's square so what link did is he, he turned his attention to the rest of the room um, and that's what you have to do is sometimes you have to adapt on the fly but stick to your principles the first principle we have is working the diagonal off this darknet so what you're going to see here is if this darknet's coming into this square what link can do is move up and begin to uh, work this diagonal now and swing to the left or if the, the if the darknet moves to the right we're going to swing north so work the diagonals um, eventually work back to the orange part of the room and that's all Blue Lagoon 1 is you know working getting Link in correct position to take advantage of what the darknets give you and do it as quickly as possible all we can do is give you a script for the first dark knight here everything after that has to be you has to be your combat it comes down to the the principles you have to ingrain in your head of okay i'm not going to chase them i'm going to go to this square um if i have to take a bop do it off a fireball because it's not as much damage as hitting a dark knight which is two hearts of damage there so um, stick to your principles don't chase don't ever chase on the same tile or same row um, that a dark knight is on um, if you're here and a dark knight is, is two squares above you moving north um, don't stay on the same row because what's going to happen is that dark knight's going to turn back into you and you know you can't swing north when a dark knight's turning back into you anyway so don't chase on that same row um, just just solid combat principles are going to be how you're going to clear this room quickly uh, but if you stick to what we've given you here if you stick to the initial movement stick to finishing high and in the middle of this room it's going to give you better average times and you're going to leave blue lagoon one with more hearts than usual as well which is going to prepare you for the rest of level eight there's no magic bullet there's no secret to this room that this is how you get a perfect room without coming out of here um, with, with coming out of your damage list there, there's no secret way we can tell you to do that like most other rooms this is all combat this is when you're going to have to put in the buffet and you're going to have to um, practice and grind on a little bit and um, if you do that and, and you work on these initial steps i promise you the time in this room can come down um, you want to be getting out of here, your target time, you want to be getting out of here right around 12 seconds, 12, 12 and a half, anything better than that. You know, you're approaching elite territory. If you're north of 15 seconds, you're doing a lot of chasing and those things. Um, if you stick to these principles, you're going to find yourself getting out of here between 13 and 15 seconds, which is an average um, time for a level eight. Try to push yourself lower. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you and good luck.